Thank you all for being here. Today, we're going to be talking about telling your story. This is so important, right? We're going to talk about simple steps to build your nonprofit's brand. My name is Aretha Simons. I get to be the webinar producer here. I'm so excited that you are here today. Today, our webinar is produced by TAP Network uh, and Lisa Quigley, Quigley and Ryan Tatum is going to join you in just a moment. Going to go over the housekeeping. You already know you're on mute, so go ahead and put your questions in the Q&A once the questions pop up in your head. Um, check your inbox. We're going to send you the slides and the video replay by tomorrow. The closed caption, if you need the closed caption, go ahead and type on the bottom of your Zoom screen where you see the CC button and you'll have the closed caption. One thing I do want to let you know when you leave, some of you may have to leave early because of whatever reason, there's going to be a survey that's going to pop up on your screen. It's just three simple questions. If you would take the time to fill it out and let us know what other topics you would love to hear from TechSoup and TAP Network, we'd greatly appreciate it. I'm going to turn this over to Lisa. Lisa and Ryan, thank you so much for being here. Have a great webinar. Awesome. Thank you, Aretha. Hi, everyone. Welcome. I am Lisa Quigley, the Director of Account Strategy here at TAP Network. I have over 20 years of experience in marketing and strategy and the privilege of working with a variety of organizations from Fortune 100 companies to dynamic startups, um, including brands you may know, Pepsi, Johnson and Johnson, but many others that you may not have heard of, but are doing wonderful things and serving great missions. My passion really lies in crafting strategic solutions that not only foster strong relationships and storytelling, but also solve problems. I do that with empathy and data-driven insights. And over the last decade, I've focused on developing omni-channels, meaning every platform you could probably imagine, um, campaigns for numerous government agencies, nonprofits, um, and health and wellness organizations. I have Ryan Tatum joining me from TAP. He is our senior art director, he brings a wealth of experience in the digital brand and communications. He focuses on user experience and creating impactful digital products and experience experiences. He's worked with major brands like Starbucks and Microsoft. His expertise lies in transforming ideas into visual stories that connect deeply with audiences and drive those meaningful results that organizations, communities that we're looking for. Tell you a little bit about TAP Network. For those of you who don't know, our passion is empowering nonprofits and government agencies with innovative digital tools. So we understand that in today's rapidly changing digital landscape, staying ahead, staying up to the day-to-day -day new technologies is especially difficult for organizations. Um, and we're here to help your organization um, make the difference and come up to speed with those or with those tools and technologies. So our mission really is simple: bridge the digital divide that nonprofits face. So we're here to enhance your ability to share your story compellingly and effectively. Because it's not just about the technology, the tools. It's really about ensuring that the digital tools that we have at our fingertips amplify your voice and magnify your impact. I'll get into a little bit um, our solutions later, but just wanted to remind you and let you know that each solution we offered is tailored fit to your organization, um, helping you not only meet, but exceed your goals. So Ryan and I are very excited to dive into today's topic on how you can effectively tell your story. Um, but first we have two polls and this, we want this to be a very interactive um, webinar. So feel free as Aretha was doing earlier to use that chat um, and the Q and A. Um, so the first poll is which of the following brands or organizations do you think has the most impactful storytelling? And you can add in why, or just in the chat, um, put a A, Nike, just do it, Apple, think different. Mixed in some nonprofits that you may have heard of, Charity Water, bringing clean water to people in developing countries, the Red Cross, providing 
emergency service all over the globe, um, as well as many other things. Disney, creating magical experiences through stories. So these brands, not only do they have a well-known brand, but they have a brand story. All right, I love this coming in. We have a variety of, as well, everybody can see. I love that everybody can see the results. It's very, it's very personal. Um, which brand speaks to you? All right, a follow up poll questions. So you may you made your choice on whether it was Nike or, or Apple or Charity Water. Why? Was it the emotional connection that it made? Or is it because you really understand what they do? Is it the consistent messaging that they have no matter where you are, online, out in the world, on your phone? Maybe it's the character or narratives. And Ryan may say it's their visual appeal or branding. And it really could be all of them that they're really doing an amazing job um, at creating that emotional connection, the message. Yes, thank you. Keep on sharing your thoughts. Really in insightful, a lot of this stuff. This is great. Awesome. All right, so we are going to turn, I'm going to turn it over to Ryan with those brands, concepts that really resonate with us, but he's gonna, we're going to step back and he's going to go over um, branding 101 for nonprofits. So take it away. Thank you, Lisa. Um, really great to be here. Um, and I'm really excited to kind of share things I've picked up over time and in, in, in school or just in real world uh, practice. But um, uh, developing a brand for a nonprofit is very similar to uh, for profit businesses. Um, there's a lot of the same considerations, um, uh, but there's some additional considerations that you need to do. You need goals that nonprofits have. And, um, and the audience is usually uh, different. We're not speaking to necessarily to uh, for-profit, we're speaking to more of a, uh, an idea. So here are some of the basics that I, that I say are more um, uniquely for nonprofits that will align with for-profit, but are a little bit more important for nonprofits. Um, so the, the first one is mission and values. Um, we have to understand the mission. Um, you need to clearly understand what, what what's driving uh, the your ideals for the for the actual nonprofit. Um, the reason it exists and um, the reason it's it's a uh, inception to change the world. So you understand your what your mission is, and then you also need to identify what your core values are. They can obviously change from uh, nonprofit to nonprofit, but usually um, you can determine what those are pretty clearly um, on the on the on the genesis of the nonprofit. Uh, the second uh, thing I need you got to remember is the audience and the stakeholders. You got to define what those are, right? Um, identify the primary stake stakeholders of the nonprofit, including donors, volunteers, beneficiaries, partners, and the broader community. So um, you just really need to send their needs, the, the the stakeholders, and what they what what you're providing the services for them. So identify what those are: um, audience and stakeholders. The third one is the brand identity. So um, that includes the mark, the logo, the visual elements that are part of the visual story of the brand. Um, does do do what what are what are the elements that make that up? Um, you need to ensure these um, these uh, elements are um, they're, they're uh, memorable. Sorry, versatile and uh, resonate with the target audience. So again, going back to who your target audience is and what what's that messaging and how does it resonate with them. Uh, the brand experience. So number four, um, you need to make sure there's consistency across all omni uh, all channels. So you want to establish brand guidelines to ensure consistency across those channels, and um, and build build your build your nonprofit's brand um, and reputation of consistently doing the same thing over and over again. Also, um, part of the brand experience is the storytelling. So you want to use storytelling to humanize the experience. Uh, you want to showcase its impact. Um, you want to connect emotionally with the stakeholders. So share compelling stories of what is going on and the people that are involved in your nonprofit and uh, the highlights of what the nonprofit does. So really good uh, opportunity there. Uh, number five is engagement and communication. So uh, community building. The first one is uh, foster a sense of community amongst uh, stakeholders by engaging them on a, on, in your mission, 
as well as activities that you do. Uh, encourage participation. Yeah, um, um, encourage um, them to give you feedback and directly tell you what works and what doesn't work for them. And uh, work with them, collaboration, really getting their input and really listening to the community. Along with that, you wanna, you wanna be transparent with everything you're doing and accountability for what you are doing. So if you say you're gonna do something, do it. If you're gonna represent something, make sure you're representing that ideal. Uh, practice it, practice it. Uh, always try to be forthcoming with information, be transparent and uh, be direct um, and, and honest. Uh, try not to hide your thing. You're, you have an ideal, you have an idea what you wanna do. Don't try to hide it with a bunch of fluff. Be direct and clear with what you're doing. Uh, number six is the value um, evaluation and adaptation. So this is a really important one. Um, you want to really listen to your feedback, like I just said. You want to listen to what it is and what's working, what's not working for people. And you want to be able to be flexible and adapt to that situation. So, for instance, if you're talking with a stakeholder, they're communicating that it's not working for them. You don't see they don't see the what your goals are. Um, you want to be able to to pivot and adapt and change what you're doing so that it actually addresses those needs. Um, it assures relevance and it just it, it shows that you're listening to what you're doing and you really um, hold it important to what the, the nonprofit is. So that um, those six things are really important for you. Uh, I'll, I'll review them one more time for you. There's the mission and values. There's the audience and stakeholders. There's the brand identity. There's the brand experience. There's the engagement and communication. And there's the valuation and adaptation. So. Um, if you follow these, if you understand what those elements are, those six elements, um, the the address the certain things for you. The address the differentiation and visibility of your nonprofit. Um, the uh, the mission communication is uh, nonprofits often have a clear mission, a set of values driving their work. Branding provides a platform to effectively communicate these values to stakeholders, including donors, beneficiaries, volunteers, and the community. It also establishes trust and credibility. Establishes trust and credibility is a crucial for nonprofits to attract funding and support. A well-developed brand can convey professionalism, transparency, and integrity, which are essential to building trust with stakeholders. Along with this, you have a community engagement. Um, nonprofits rely heavily on community support, whether it's through donations, volunteerism, and advocacy. Branding can help you uh, create a sense of belonging and identity among supporters fostering stronger connections and engagement. With, this, with community engagement, um, really emphasis the storytelling and the impact that you're doing. Um, effectively branding, effective branding uh, enables nonprofits to tell their story and to showcase their impact in a compelling way. This is, can help attract donors and volunteers who are passionate about organization's cause and want to be part of making a difference. So um, storytelling is really important to remember that one. Along with that, you want to be consistent and uh, consistency and recognition. Um, consistent branding across communication channels and touch points helps nonprofits build recognition and reinforce their identity in the minds of stakeholders. Uh, last two is the strategic partnerships. Uh, strong brand can also um, attract potential partners, sponsors, and collaborators who align with nonprofits' mission and values, facilitating strategic partnerships that can amplify impact. So it uh, really allows you to build relationships with uh, maybe bigger organizations that can help support your cause. So really, really um, uh, positioning yourself and communicating yourself to really allow your nonprofit to succeed. And then last but not least is really important is the long-term sustainability of your nonprofit. Um, investing in branding is essential for the long-term and sustainability of nonprofits. A uh, well-established brand can help you um, weather the challenges, attract ongoing support, and adapt to changing circumstances while remaining true to the organization's mission and values. So there's that. Moving on. Just, uh, these are the steps uh, to a successful design, to designing a brand. These are the things you want to remember when you're actually developing a brand. One is to understand the brand. Um, you need to begin by truly understanding what you're doing, right? Um, understand your brand's values, your target audiences, and unique settings, propositions, and market position. You wanna, you wanna do, you wanna do your research on, um, on conducting market research and analyze and analyze your competitors. That's really important, right? Understand who you're competing with. Um, 
you want to understand industry trends. You want to be very cognizant of things that are going on in the industry and just be aware of it. Do, you know, be read, be online, learning about that stuff. And you want to um, you want to understand your audience and what they prefer, right? Um, identify the gaps and opportunities for differentiation. So you want to understand how you can fill those gaps and how you're different than the other people, right? Um, you want another important thing to do is you want to create a strategy when you create a brand. You want to define the brand's personality, the voice, the messaging, and the visual identity. Develop the brand guidelines, um, ensuring ensuring consistency across all channels. Uh, the next step uh, in developing a brand is to design the logo, design the mark, design the, the, the letter forms. The logo is the cornerstone of the brand identity. Um, you need to create the logo that is memorable. You want to do it that's versatile. And you want to reflect the brand's values and personality. So making sure that just kind of aligns with um, what you're doing. Like, like, does it look? Does it feel? Does it, does it say those things without actually verbally saying those things? Um, along with the, the mark itself, you want to make sure that you're developing the visual elements that go along with it. So not necessarily the word mark, but the, um, the, the terminology we, we use in-house is called pizzazz glue, the stuff that supports the messaging, the visual identity of the brand. So, um, for instance, uh, at Tap Network, we have a lot of different um, uh, modern kind of objects floating throughout the page. It just gives us a sense of rhythm and storytelling for our company. So, uh, creating those visual elements. Uh, you also want to do it consistently, right? You want to do it. Um, you want to do it. Uh, you don't. You want to just do it one place. You want to do it across all channels. So, if you're doing it in an email, you want to do it in a web page. You want to do it in um, brand collateral. Just making sure you're consistent and applying the brand. Um, another really good point to remember when you're creating your brand is um, you always want to get feedback. You always want to you always want to kind of reach out and see how it's uh, playing in real world situations. Um, you want to solicit feedback from stakeholders, from your from your audience, uh, uh, professionals in the industry, and just making sure it's it's up up to up to fluff, right? It's up to par. Um, you also want to continue. You don't want to get set in stone. You don't want to get to the point where oh, this is a great mark. This will be good, but 10 years down the road, will it work? Do you think it is relevant? Is it still strong? So you always want to be iterating and evolving your brand, um, which is different than saying changing your brand. You just want to make sure you're on point and making sure that it's relevant in today's market. And last but not least, um, you want to protect your brand. You want to you want to safeguard the brand identity by uh, trademarking the logo um, and other key assets you have in your in your toolbox. Just making sure that you own the brand and not people aren't there like wrecking it, taking your brand and adding stuff to it. Just always protect your brand because that's that's the first thing your customers see. Um, and that should give you a really understanding of how we do we do branding when we think about branding at Tap, right? We and we really want to just make sure that we're 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 doing all these things. And if you can do all these things, um, your brand is really going to succeed. So now that you know all about the ways we go about doing it, the elements that are involved in the brand, um, I figured it was kind of pretty important to maybe review maybe some of the basics of actual designing visual identity as opposed to the messaging or um, uh, other aspects of brand. Um, the the silo in which I work is more the visual side. So I, I do a lot of different things. I have to think of a lot of visual things. Um, that necessarily smaller places can't, can't really deal with, right? Like, so that's why people use Canva. I'm looking in the chat here and people are saying, Canva's great. Yeah, it's actually a really good tool to use. Um, but anyway, so getting back to the basics, there's a, there's, there's 10, there's, 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 a, there's about seven to 10 different things you want to remember. Not necessarily more important than others, but there's, there, these are the things you want to remember when you are actually doing it yourself. So the first and foremost is topography. Um, this one was hard for me when I first started kind of learning about topography. I thought you just grab a font. You go in there and you just put it on a page and you're good to go. There's a lot more to it, right? You want to choose, you want to choose a a font, and the difference is being a font is some digital versus a typeface, which is all over the place, right? So when I refer to a font, they're interchangeable in this instance, but that's the delineation between the two. So make sure you're choosing a font that fits your brand's personality the best. It's easily readable. Um, you don't want to get something that is very a display font and you can't really read large blocks of copy of it. So just being aware of how it fits within your organization. Um, another important thing to remember is color theory. 
um, being colorblind myself, this one was really hard for me, but it's actually very important. And I've learned to adjust and making sure that I have represented in the designs that I do. So uh, color theory is understanding the psychology of colors and how they work together, opposites, um, aligning colors, um, just making sure that it fits with your identity and the messaging that you're putting out there. So um, color theory. Um, layout and composition. So the basis of the visual design is not necessarily making stuff look pretty, but it's also organi organizing information in a very logical hierarchical order, right? So it's understand, you can digest the information quickly, understand it. It's not a lot of display fonts that you just can't understand. So making sure that you have adequate layout and composition of the information in which you're, you're, you're trying to convey, um, making sure that it's balanced, has enough white space, um, either it's asymmetrically balanced or um, center aligned, just making sure things are spaced out and they can breathe. Just fundamentally looking at this look good to you, right? Um, along with that, uh, like I said, the visual hierarchy is very important. And then balance, um, achieving equilibrium and design elements to create a sense of uh, sustainability and harmony. So you don't want to put a bunch of information up top on this, on a, say you're making a poster, you have a bunch of information on top about your nonprofit and then leave a bunch of white space on the bottom. It doesn't really, when the user's looking at that, they're not going to look at it and be, want to look at it. They're going to be kind of off put by it because they're like, this isn't balanced for me. So be just being aware of how you have the information flowing throughout your, your document at the time, whether it be a web page or a poster in that regard. Um, and then um, last, um, this is the, this is the one that I, that as you, as the designers, they do more and more, they realize in the beginning, I like to add stuff. I like to add a lot of, a lot of bright, fun things. And I realized as I've gotten uh, over the years, I like, to I like to take stuff away. What can I take away from this to make it still legible and still pretty without, what, just what can I take away? But less is more in my opinion. So just keeping it simple, um, keeping it clean, keep, keeping it uncluttered. So um, uh, you can effectively communicate the message in which you want to convey. And that's a really rudimental way and a really quick, dirty way of understanding design. Yeah, and that's a really speak. awesome, Ryan. So we have a few questions. I thought we would just answer them here and we could kind of go back sure. and forth. Um, in a couple slides, we're going to get through some examples and we could talk through um, what you just went over, but there there was a question about what would be your opinion on a logo containing a QR code or a call to action? Would that fit into the basic principles of what you look for in a logo? Um, for the, the 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 brand mark itself, no. Um, but um, in consideration and really nowadays, it's really important to remember that ADA. And accessibility for everyone is very important, right? That's it's it's that's the key goal in a lot of the designs that I do is making sure everyone can understand it and digest it. And but as far as a brand itself and the visual mark for the company, no, QR codes are not not part of that. Um, you will provide QR codes along with the mark itself to provide that ADA right to accessibility for people, but it does not pertain to the actual mark itself. Yep. And to follow up on that question, we got another um, question from Ramona that asked, when you're trying to make your brand ADA accessible, how does color make into the, how does color play into these decisions? And we, you and I are working on several projects right now where not only do we have to take into consideration color, but also language, um, but maybe you could talk about what, the process that you go through, not only when choosing a color, but also when making sure, you know, is it a checker um, or how do you go about making sure it is accessible for all? Um, well, that, very good question, by the way. Thank you for asking it. Um, again, to, to reiterate, ADA, the, what's more important here is, is making stuff look pretty or is it accessibility and be, being able to convey your message? And I would say it's the latter, right? It's, it's conveying... Um, the color is not necessarily more important than it is to providing an, uh, a, a visual uh, message and clear message to people. So um, there is a couple tools online that allow that allow you to um, to test if it's ADA compliant. Um, the percentage in which the colors 
um, work. But what I recommend is you just, you can go online. You, there's, a, there's a couple different sites. I, I can't think of any offhand, but there are certain colors that work better for people that will be either, um, that are either hard of uh, seeing, they can't see very well, uh, or that are, have a hard time understanding, um, like colorblind with people like myself. So there are a few basic rules that you want to do. You always want to use contrasting images, colors um, that that speak well together, that that work well together. But there's no uh, specific way other than going, running it through testing online to make sure that it's compliant with ADA standards. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, awesome. That was great. Yep, keep those questions coming. And thank you um, for bringing up accessibility. Yeah. It, uh, accessibility is very important in, in my line of work. So it's good that you're, everyone's thinking about it. Absolutely. All right. We got an another poll question for you and you can either write the number this time, we're keeping you on your toes or go ahead and write which element you think is the most critical for establishing a strong nonprofit brand. I'll let you think about that. There. You could answer most or maybe a trick question and you could answer more than one. <laughs> Seems the people really are into the engagement and communication. I'd like to yeah. see that. And I sort of alluded to it. Each one, each one of these aspects um, in our line of work are very critical. Although it does depend on where your specific organization is. Um, if, if your mission and your vision, you have your audience and stakeholders, all of those important things that Ryan was, was talking about, you have that down, but maybe your visual identity isn't as strong. You really have to do some introspection of the organization to see um, what should be the most important for yours. So. Absolutely. Thank you guys for participating. So we're going to take all of those important elements and we're going to start to talk about a brand story. Um, I did want to provide, somebody was saying, hey, what's in, what's the examples of typography, hierarchy, branding? Let's, let's see some fun visuals. Um, and these are some clients of ours that we've done branding projects for. We've done small branding projects. Hey, we have a logo. We just need to help make it better. Hey, we have a logo and some messaging. We just need to bump it up. Or we have a logo and a brand guidelines, but we don't have it applied to our marketing materials. So there are steps along this branding curve. Um, you'll see here how all of the branding plays with each other. The visual space, depending on the size and the platform um, and all, always making sure we were talking about that accessibility that uh, it, it is contrasting, you know, a very high contrast so that anyone can see it. But these are, um, again, examples of the visual elements that we were talking about and good to think about where is your organization, you know, on the spectrum of what your brand looks like. Um, the cohesive look and feel of this, you know, it's essential. But when we're talking about brand stories, we really have to transcend um, logos and color schemes. Uh, taking into consideration the essence of your organization, your mission, your values, and the change you want to see in the world to then how do you put that into your brand story? And this is the story that you share visually online or when you're talking to your community, your donors and your stakeholders. Um, a well-defined brand story will elevate your nonprofit's visibility. Um, it, it will make it reg recognizable, not only because you have that beautiful, clear and cohesive brand, but because people remember the story that you told them. So every, I'm sure everybody knows what storytelling is. If I, if I asked any of you, you could say, you know, storytelling. I tell stories every day and hopefully we've heard them growing up when we were when we were little. But what are the elements that make up an effective brand story for a nonprofit? So, a story has to be compelling and memorable and authentic that touches your hearts. Um and it makes your audience feel that they're a part of your journey and your mission. 
in that competitive landscape that we were talking about, how are they going to recognize your therapeutic writing center over someone else's, or maybe it's a for-profit. And truly working with many nonprofits, it's that over the years, um, it's that true story, that emotional connection. Um, it's not only truthful, but you're connecting on a human level. So thinking about that stories um, and reflecting on the nature of your work is really the first step in creating your brand story. But some stories are complicated. Um, some organizations, how you got to where you are is complicated. So it's hard to come up with your brand story, but really clarity, making sure that your story is clear and concise. So you don't, so you don't lose the audience. They, they understand what it is that you do. Um, so these are the three elements that, again, we will think about as we're talking through the brand story. Um, and in a couple of sentences or a bullet point, I'm gonna turn it over to you again. I want you to think about and share, again, maybe in a sentence, maybe in a bullet point, um, a moment that your organization um, impacted someone, or what is the a story that you've had a uh, success? Maybe it was, uh, we're gonna get into Make-A-Wish Foundation. Maybe it was, a child that was granted a wish and you really remember how it resonated. Maybe I'm going to go back to my therapeutic writing. It was a veteran with PTSD who um, you connected with and through therapeutic ride, writing overcame adversity and depression. If there's just one story that you can think of um, that really communicates what your organization does, and you want to share, that's great, but keep it in the back of your mind um, as we go through the aspects of developing your brand story. So the key aspects are purpose. Why does your organization exist? And what drives your mission? If we have a clear understanding of that purpose, when we get time, when, when it's time to tell our story, we'll know what to lead with, what's the, at the heart. What's our vision? What do you want the future to look like through your work? And are there characters, are there heroes that are in your story? Are they the beneficiaries, the veterans, the children, the community members? Are they the volunteers? Or are they staff? Who is the character and who are the heroes in your story? Think about the conflict. There is conflict everywhere and everything. Um, so what challenges or problems are you addressing? What is that conflict? Um, resolution. Of course, we always wanna get to how your organization is so solving these problems and what successes have you achieved? And your values, what principles guide your organizations and maybe set you apart, which leads into your unique selling proposition? What makes your organization unique compared to others in your field? So I encourage you now to think about these elements as we move forward with a couple of examples. Think about which ones you may improve on. So we had talked earlier, maybe you know your mission, hopefully and your vision and your audience, but perhaps you don't have a tagline or visual elements, or maybe you're not sure, you know, who are the characters? We talk to politicians, we talk to donors, we talk, you talk to so many people every day that sometimes your message can get diluted. So sectioning those audience out, we do personas with, with, all of our clients that we're working with, we say, okay, let's lay out all of the people that we're communicating with and we break them down by by personas. So these are just some things to think about um, as we go forward. Once you have all of the key aspects, there are proven formats for brand stories. It only it not only tells your story, but it really engages. 
And these are structured storytelling frameworks that successful organizations all over the globe use to connect deeply with their audiences. So there's one very classic hero's journey. I think every single movie, every single book uses that and it's called the hero's journey. Uh, I'd love to hear if anybody has heard of it, who's heard of it, who hasn't, um, and if you've used it yourself. Um, so the hero's journey, what it's all about, it turns your audience into the hero of their own story with your organization acting as the guiding mentor. So how it unfolds. Okay, so there's a call to adventure. And now we can think of any of our favorite storylines or books. The hero, a client, your community, child, the veteran, they, they serve um, they serve as our hero, as our character, and they're faced with a problem or a challenge, and we're their guide. So your organization steps in to provide the necessary tools, the aid, the services to that hero. But along the way, inevitably, the hero encounters trials that reflect real life obstacles that your audience that your faces. But there's a victory. With your help, the hero can overcome these challenges and then the return. The hero returns transformed, showcasing the change or impact that your organization has facilitated. So one organization, we're just gonna go through a couple of examples that use this hero's journey. Um, and we can walk through how they use it. Make-A-Wish Foundation, I mentioned them earlier. Okay, so what's their call to adventure? Each journey begins when a critically ill child is given a, the chance to dream big. Imagine a wish that brings them joy and escape from all of their medical challenges. Um, who's the guide? The guide is Make-A-Wish Foundation. And with a network of volunteers, donors, medical professionals, there's so many people in that audience, but Make-A-Wish acts as a guide to transform that child's dream into a reality. And they provide logistical support and emotional support. The challenge, uh, a child faces and navigates both the physical challenges of their illness and the emotional hurdles of daring to dream during these tough times. And the victory is when that wish comes true. I'm sure you can picture right now um, a Make-A-Wish campaign that you've seen where you see a child, maybe it's at Disney, maybe it's at a ballpark. Um, it, it, it is, maybe it's meeting Taylor Swift. What is their biggest dream? It has come true. And it's that victory moment um, that we want to convey in this brand's story. And then return from their adventure transformed. The child gains new strength and hope there was a positive impact that extends beyond the child, touching families, touching community members, health providers, um, and offering inspiration with their story. So I thought this was a very good um, explanation and walk through a hero's journey. Just go through a couple more as it will hopefully help you put your organization um, as the guide in the hero's journey. So Charity Water is brought up as great storytelling um, and its simplicity in, in saying what it does to its audience. So the call to adventure, communities suffering from lack of access to clean water. The guide, Charity Water positions itself as the guide um, and the access to clean water very simply. The obstacles of geographical, financial, infrastructure constraints that prevent access to clean water. And then the victory of the actual construction and the images of water projects all over the globe. People no longer having to take long walks um, or get sick because of contaminated water. And the so the return communities thrive with improved health and increased education, economic growth, and really um, benefits going on and on. And the last one, because we just participated in a Women's Habitat for Humanity, um, love this. Their call to adventure is families and individuals in the need of affordable housing face the adventure of building their own homes. So Habitat for Humanity serves as the guide provide resources, volunteers, expertise. 
The challenge include the physical labor of building the homes. Has anyone seen on social media, you know, their their friends and family building houses with hammers all in their t-shirts um, and, and really, you know, having that victory of completing a home and the empowerment um, that comes for our, our hero of home ownership. Um, so the return families can gain stability and security, which transform their lives and help to engage more productively in their communities. So you can see how each of these organizations, they have their own visual brand. They have their typography, they have their logos and their marks, but what resonates is that brand story that we remember when I say, make a wish, charity water, or Habitat for Humanity. And your organization has just as an impactful story, I'm sure, um, just making sure that that we're communicating that in all of the materials and <clears throat> branding that we have out there. So I just went through a hero, hero's journey, which is very um, popular and could be used by each organization on this call. But there's other methods that we wanted to mention, and I'll just walk through, and you'll have this as a resource to go back and, and say, which one should I use for mine? There is a fun one. It's very simple. It's called and, but, therefore. It simplifies the structure by setting a situation and presenting a problem, but, and offering a solution, therefore. And there's so many examples of different organizations that are using this. Um, <clears throat> there's the power of why that focuses on motivations behind your actions and adding depth to your story. There's the what, so what, now what method, which is a reflective approach looking at events and their implications and the, and the actions that should follow. The Pixar framework, this follows a structure where, you guessed it, um, characters face challenges and undergo transformation much like the Pixar films. And then there's the Oren Claff pitch method, this is, uses framing and positioning to capture and hold your audience's attention. Um, so this is very useful for high stakes settings. So as we consider these frameworks, I really would like you to think about how they may help your organization structure your story. Which one resonates with your mission and your goals and how can you use these techniques, even if it was that hero story, that first one to connect with your audience. So, I also wanted to, um, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Lisa. I just want to quickly address, there was a question, I, I'm sorry um, who asked it, but I wanted to quickly um, see. So the visual side of this is, is I would say, one part of the whole totality of the story, right? So the as Lisa's talking about the messaging and the hero's journey, and that's that's the brand itself. Um, representing our stakeholders and and important people and and the people that we're trying to um provide this the visual elements for um that the visual stuff is one element that you're providing to your stakeholders so to answer your question um the the visual side is just a part of the actual messaging in the whole uh, totality of the story so hopefully that answered your question yeah, absolutely. Thanks for um, <clears throat> interjecting. I think that that is a true piece. It's a first. It's actually the first thing you may think of if we didn't have those words on the screen. But it's actually a, a small piece, and without having all of the answers to the things that we've gone over, it's hard to create that visual aspect that truly represents the brand. Awesome. We got a lot of D's and E's, it looks like. Yep, let me go back to that one. So, yeah. yep, emotional resonance, CDE, clarity, identifying impactful stories, integrating stories into marketing materials, E, yes. That is, and, and to go back, integrating your stories into marketing materials, right? So we've establish the key aspects, your mission, your vision, your audience, your purpose, then you've translated it into your core branding, 
look and feel. It's all cohesive. Then you create your brand story. How do you then translate that back into your materials visually? Like we were talking about on, on websites. Um, and so sometimes you can do it internally and sometimes um, you need a little bit of help. And that sort of goes into what we do as an agency to get started on how to incorporate um, either all of these elements or maybe the elements that you're lacking. So Ryan, do you wanna go over? Sure. Um, so as you know, at the, uh, we get tap these the, these are the things that we 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 if we have all this stuff we're gonna this is how we kind of start our journey down this 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 branding um uh the first thing we do um is internally is we we conduct a brand audit so we review the the all the internal uh uh pieces assets uh collateral um we really want to get a good understanding of of what we have currently established um the next step was we develop uh, our our brand uh, positioning. So we we learn what that is, and we really uh, move to develop that portion of it. Um, after we develop the positioning, then we actually move on to creating the brand identity itself. So we 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 talked about it earlier, right? The visual elements along with the the story itself. Um, we once we completed the visual elements, then we go on and we really start working on the 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 granular. Uh, story definition the brand story itself um and then we refine that working internally working again uh, the things i mentioned right we we do feedback we, we work to check with our stakeholders internally and then once we actually have that nailed down and refined um we start to implement that across all of our channels our omni channel right we the different channels being um, collateral emails uh social um so various uh channels in which you discuss or convey the messaging of the, the nonprofit. Um, the next thing, once we have all that stuff in place, uh, uh, we, we, we move on to training the team itself, the internal, the, we, we train the people on understanding what that messaging is, how we use it, how we apply it in certain areas, how we convey the actual brand story. Um, and then moving on to, uh, uh, along with that, once we convey that information to the team and we 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 feel confident that the the it is understood, we uh, we we monitor and adapt. Again, this is going back to if there's a big pivot or if there's some different messaging that comes along or things change in the structure. We 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 always are aware of that and we we always are able to pivot or adapt to um, that situation. Once we, we uh, if we get to that situation, um, we one thing we like to always do is also monitor the impact in which uh, the messaging is. Uh, it, how do we gauge it? How do we test that? How do we do we do testing? Do we we do we review um, uh, Q and A's like uh, testing A B testing? So really, just um, uh, measuring the impact of what our messaging is. Um, one of the lot a lot of things we do is we really uh, emphasis we want to build trust. Uh, amongst our brand. Um, how many times you've gone out there and you really just don't feel confident in the brand itself? Um, and what, what does that lead to? Do you, do you feel confident in, in signing an agreement with these people? Do you, do you like to, do, do you want to use the brand? So trust is really, really, really important. And then the last part of getting started is um, making sure that it's sustainable. Like I said, um, is it, is it, is what you're doing? Is it providing sustainability for the messaging? Will it land? Will, do you see it lasting 10 years down the road is that longevity um is it is, are people really engaging with it um so um those are those are the, the a through j there are the the things that all the things that we have to take in consideration when we're trying to get started with a brand um, awesome yeah and the budget so i talked about fine tuning our services based on where each of our uh, nonprofits or our clients are and we would establish that you know, um, in that in that audit of where you are, how does it relate to your budget? Um, also, resources and time. Something that we can take into consideration is if you have a small team, and we would then put um, questions back to you. Have you fill out a questionnaire? But you are not quite ready to answer those questions. You don't have the time. That is something that we have conversations about. Um, how prepared are you? Do you have the the time to actually move forward. And then I just wanted to mention digital trends in there because 
sometimes digitally is the easiest way to move forward. Um, you know, there is a lot of collateral out there that is printed and then it gets it gets wasted. Also, awareness campaigns um, when you're trying to get out your brand after we've done all of these steps um, sometimes aren't able to be measured. But I just wanted to put that digitally, we now have the tools to be able to measure the impact and the feedback and close that feedback loop so then that we can um, reiterate if needed. Um, and again, if you're thinking, all right, this is great, but how do I know when to engage with an um, agency? Well, if you're considering just your initial branding, you really don't have a brand. You've started from um, a small organization and a mission and, and you've grown into, yes, we need everything. That That is a great time to involve an agency. If you're an established brand or you got going and now now you are in a growth mode and you're ready to rebrand um, and helping identify all of those key aspects. Specialized campaigns too. So we do a lot with um, agencies that want to foc focus on a specialized campaign under their uh, branding or marketing umbrella. Uh, growth, and we can help with training and development. There are also a ton of resources, as you know, you're here through webinars, uh, through YouTube, uh, through the Content Institute. Um, so there are a ton of free resources and we are here. We included our contact information up at the beginning. If you would love to connect with you, if you have any questions. Um, um, really quickly, Lisa, I just wanted to kind of point out, um, I know there's there is there's definitely gonna be people that just don't have it in their budget to go for an agency. And that's 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 understandable. That's that's a lot of nonprofits have that ability not to point you away from going to an agency, but just to let you know, along with that option of coming to the agency, there's a lot like she said, there's a lot of um self-help stuff out there. If you get the point where you just it's just not within your um in your in your scope of your project, um be on the lookout. There's tons of webinars, online courses, ebooks and guides and then um uh, or just self-help out there that people are willing to share that information if you're just on a shoestring budget and you just can't afford an agency so there is opportunity and um, um uh out there for you to to gain that knowledge um but it, every every situation is unique so uh, be aware of that absolutely you mentioned canva they're getting ready to have their big um presentation where they've announced new tools and software. And so definitely a great resource for nonprofits. Um, if you want to see how your organization stacks up, we have a free digital marketing assessment tool. Um, click this link, or you can go onto the TechSoup website and find out all of our free assessment tools um, and eBooks through there. But we want to make sure, and we have left time for Q&A. So if anyone has any um, additional questions on resources, on anything that we talked about, we'd love to um, use this time to expand on anything that we've talked about. And I do want to just say again how much I appreciate all of your feedback and participation. It's really great to see what each of you say who participated, um, what your organization does in, in your one sentence. Um, can yep for the link for the tool in the chat, sure. Okay, put our contacts. All right, we're now we're gonna go through backwards. <laughs> There we go. Are there articles on TechSoup website for the brand story methods? TAP is releasing a blog um, that will complement this webinar uh, this week. So be on the lookout for that. Awesome, thank you guys. All right, I think that's it. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Aretha and TechSoup, and we will see you again soon.
Thank you so much, y'all. Have a very nice day. Bye.